Ah, what a lad, and the lads just keep on coming. Today's guest is not only one of the best lads that you'll ever meet, he's also one of the best hookers in the modern era. He has an absolute gun, and he's been that way for Canterbury, the Crusaders, and the All Blacks over his 12-year career to date. He's also won MPC titles, plenty of Super Rugby titles, and even a Rugby World Cup. And on top of all that, he's soon to become the greatest forward try scorer in Super Rugby history. Off the field, he's even started his own drink company called Eclipse, and he is just a genuine legend on and off the field. It is, of course, the one and only Cody Taylor. Welcome, mate. Hello, an intro, mate. Uh, <laughs> no, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, a bit nervous, but uh, we'll rip into it. Mate, I am very much looking forward to trying one of these Eclipse. I know you've worked hard on this product. First time trying it, um, but... How did you start? How did this? How did this all start, mate? Jeez, oh, have a taste first, and we'll we'll get into it. Orange and mango, that one. Oh my god, it's <laughs> delicious. I know mate. you don't drink coffee, so that it might actually. This is have my a coffee week. replacement. <laughs> so what's in it? We've got creatine, caffeine, bitter alanine. Yeah, a few nootropics, mate. Amino acids. Yeah, it's sort of, sort of uh, a bit of everything. Um, Funnily enough, this is when it wasn't our first first idea. That's sort of our Eclipse performance drink. But how we started, geez, um, pretty much I uh, I don't mind dabbling into a bit of CrossFit and I've got a good friend of mine uh, who has a CrossFit gym in Christchurch and mm. um, just going in there for pre-seasons, uh, doing workouts for, you know, obviously rugby. Um, we used to dabble into a few different drinks uh, that he supplied around uh, that was Fit Aid was one of them, uh, and I just remember after a workout sitting there, and we were like, mate, why the hell can't we do this? Like, yeah. um, These things sell for like seven bucks a pop, and uh, we're here drinking them, and we could make a New Zealand product and actually drink it without having the risk of being um, having substances in it that's banned for sport, and that was sort of where we came from, and uh, the idea was around more of a recovery drink at first, and... Um, that's what we worked hard on for probably a good two years and mm. um, we got to the point where we had a, had a really solid drink there and uh, funnily enough we've sort of the last 12 to 18 months we've, we've hit a bit of a wall with that one just with the way um, the formulation works and stuff but in the process of all that we thought well we could probably make three three drinks that we would love to do eventually and this was one of them as well, the performance. Um, we sort of got three pillars that we focus on around performance, recovery and well-being so... Mm. The idea was to have three drinks based off those three things, and um, yeah, this is more your your sort of performance one that you take pre-game, pre-workout, yeah. just to get you up, get pre-podcast, yeah, pre-potty <laughs> during the potty, <laughs> yeah. But um, it goes all right, and yeah, um, it seems to do do all right. We uh we haven't pushed it too hard at the moment, just because the recovery one, um, yeah, she had itself politely and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a whole different world, man. Yeah. This business stuff. So, where do you even start? You've got your idea. What's the next step? Like um, to come up with the drink. You know, you talk about the formula and that all sort of shed itself. But like, what? Is, how does that even look? Like, talk me through it. Jeez. So, well, yeah, it was just an idea, and then we're like, right, where do we go from here? And uh, trust the old Google. You start looking up on the internet, and there's uh, we were found out that there's like these food innovation companies that are sort of government funded that. Um, are paid to, I suppose, help new businesses uh, become, I don't know, uh, get on the shelf pretty much mm. and become a, 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 um, a drink or a food or whatever. So we, we joined up with them, sort of signed a contract around helping us formulate that and that went all good. They, they sort of set us, put us in the, in the um, I suppose, with the right people and yeah. formulated this drink, uh, that first one. Was a shocker. <laughs> it was great to start with. We had good samples. We we're like, oh yeah, sweet, we're on here. Let's go. We're gonna make a good drink. And um, I think we made, geez, we I think it was something like three thousand liters was was what we went with. And um, on on in terms of scale, that's pretty small. But yeah. when you're first starting, that's a huge <laughs> run. <laughs> that's a lot of cans and labels and boxes to sort of, uh, I suppose, flush down the drain. And yeah. um, so how, how did it not work? Was it just what didn't even work at all? Or it just, just terrible. Did, yeah, it just um, pretty much once you go to um, like big time formulation and and you go to a canning line, yeah. uh, put 
from going from mixing teaspoons pretty much <laughs> to mixing bags of stuff yeah there's a big difference and um we found that out the hard way we thought oh yeah this will be all right and yeah the cans just did not uh fill the way they were supposed to there was yeah. probably some cans with three times the amount they needed yeah. <laughs> and some with 10 yeah. percent of what they <laughs> needed so that was a that was a big learning for us and then we sort of went away from from those guys, and along the way, um, you meet these people. Like there's a, a brand out there, Pacific Flavors. Um, Grins would have used mm. them, I'm pretty sure. A lot of New Zealand companies would know who I'm talking about, but they also help formulate drinks. Oh, and yeah. um, we met a few good buggers in that in that um, company, and we still work with one today. And they they just put us in the right. Um, well, they, they they showed us where where we were going wrong and what we needed to do, and ripped it right back. And yeah. just we just took a few things out, and uh, we managed to to get there in the end. But um, again, we had a few formulation issues with that recovery one. But they also helped us develop this one, which is probably a, our best drink to date in terms of flavour and, and what it has in it. So, yeah, that's mate. <laughs> the business world adds a whole nother world. <laughs> it is when you're like, oh. Because this is all all self funded by me and my mate, and yeah, um, yeah when you start literally watching money go down yeah. the drain, it's like <laughs> shit. Here we go. <laughs> How much more do we want to pump in? Um, and we haven't actively looked for people to invest or anything, just because yeah. you know it takes a lot to get a stable sort of business running smoothly, and and there's a lot of things we still need to work on, mm. but um. Hopefully we can get to that point eventually. You've got this delicious drink <laughs> now on the market. You must be proud of it. Obviously, all that you've gone through to have now have the product that you're, you're proud of, that you're willing to, you know, proud yeah. to sell. I think um, what I'm proud of is like we went away from something that we knew, um, stepped into a whole new world, and you're forced to ask questions and, and yeah. have um, conversations with people that you'd never even be able to talk to usually. And mm. um you definitely. Oh, for me, I was definitely standing in the, like in the deep end. Like some of the even now, there's stuff that just goes over my head with yeah. um, the way it all works. But uh, you do learn a lot, and in, in, in a way, it's just like PDM that we do yeah. with footy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so cool. I love seeing people dive into different areas like that, especially while they're still playing. Because, like you say, you would have learned so much from this venture, even if it does go. Um, bad at the, at the end of the day you still would have learnt so much and um, I'm sure you'll get your money back from your investment at some point <laughs> yeah, but I think it will be this because man this is one of the best drinks I've ever tasted yeah. and I'm feeling the caffeine hit already yeah I don't know how long <laughs> this potty might go but too long <laughs> if you keep drinking it mate. <laughs> so where do you buy it where can you get it from what's the how, um, do, you, how do you sort of sell it at the moment we've, we're only in a few stores we're in a couple gyms um we're in a supplement store in Christchurch, but mainly just our website, which is pretty much just the name, EclipseSports.com. Yeah. Um, obviously, the three for the E at the end. Mm, nice um, touch. That's was that the, yours? That was a sort of three pillars angle we went <laughs> with. Um, yeah, so it's just online. And um, yeah, we've sort of given a wee plug, but we've got a wee water lead code if you want to get 15% oh, you're off. Getting. You're getting. Uh, capitals. And uh, yeah, so anyone listening, you want to give it a nudge, then. There's a wee deal there if you want to try it. That's New Zealand based only, sorry. So Yeah. Yeah. So you don't do overseas yet? No, yeah. Shipping yet, like shipping adds up, eh man. Shipping yeah. overseas is expensive. Oh man. And like a can itself weighs bugger all and then you put liquid in it. Yeah. And you know how it is. <laughs> shipping is all based off weight. So Yeah. Um yeah, we had three PL uh, logistics dealing with it up up north and um that helps but also if you're not like continually selling product, then you're just sitting there and you're paying for that product to yeah. sit there. So we're sort of at a point where we just manage it ourselves yeah. and um, chip away. And yeah, we'll get it. We'll hopefully be able to, like Australia would be the dream. Mm. Um, but oh, ever since we started, which is probably three years ago now, to where we are today, like there's been so many companies come out with sort of the same angled drink and yeah. it's just like, Competitive, you're, you're, yeah, and you're though. competing with some big dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you are a big dog, and hopefully, the Waterlad listeners get behind you and um, support this delicious drink. Uh, Waterlad was the promo code. Waterlad, fifteen percent off. Wow, go get a mix of that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's all special. we can afford at the moment, peeps. <laughs> Just enjoy it mm. and support the absolute lad. But mate, let's get to your journey. I mean, you started. You're born in Levin, weren't you? So, yeah. Give us the give us the rundown of 
your upbringing? Yes, um, yeah, so I'm from um, Horofunua Kapiti, all live in. Um, was born there. I actually grew up in Australia, so um, mm. until I was, or well, just before I was 12, we moved back. But When did you move over there? Um, I think I was like three months old or something. Oh, true. I actually, have, yeah, so I was a little mozzie running around in, over there. I oh, um, so hardly live in, really. Uh, no, nah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. That was more my teenage years, oh, yeah. uh, getting amongst it. Um, but... Nah, so I grew up in a place called Crestmead, and which is sort of um, is it North North Brisbane or South Brisbane? I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but yeah, small small sort of town. Played rugby league most of my time over there. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, awesome awesome place to grow up. I think uh, mum and dad just went over there for work, and there was uh, what two of us at the time, and we've got four siblings or oh, three siblings. Sorry, and um, yeah, so we we just. Enjoyed our time over there and uh, come back to Levin. First week back into Levin, played my first game of rugby. Um, that was a that was a pretty interesting uh, thing. Uh, I think the first time I got tackled, I got up to play the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know what rugby was. Um, I only thing I sort of recall is watching the All Blacks when I was a kid oh, in yeah. Australia and the old man screaming at the telly. Yeah. Because um, I, yeah, I, I mean, I followed league hard out when I was a young buck and. Um, I remember coming home for holidays and like Nana had a calendar with like this the Super Rugby calendar on the wall and oh, yeah. I vividly remember being like, "Who's the Hurricanes?" or like yeah. all these different logos. I was like, "What the hell is this?" But um, yeah. So my uh, I suppose my childhood was more around Australia and came back over here. Um, went to Hortofanua College in Levin, uh, where we had our preseason. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. year. Um, and uh, yeah, Levin's a small place. I think uh, there's about twenty thousand people there, uh, sort of in between Wellington and Palmerston North, uh, and not a great rugby. I suppose, yeah, rugby's not as good there as it is obviously in Manawatu or, two or, mm. or um, Wellington. But just chipped away, managed to make a, a rep team, sort of under 16s paper team, and that was I think that's where the the whole dream of rugby sort of grew. What rep team was that? Was that New um, Zealand? No, no, nah, nah, it was just, uh, we had the under-16 uh, Hurricanes regional oh, okay. um, comp, so all the provinces, so we were playing Div 2, Poverty Bay, True. Um, and yeah, so I was one of the Div 2 players to, to manage to make this paper team, and uh, you know, the likes of like Don Bird, Reggie Goods, oh, yeah. Mike Kying, uh, I remember all those yeah, boys, yeah. um, Solomon and Sakalia, like those are sort of the names. Ben Tommy Funa, I think, uh, were running around back then and uh I remember standing like in the line just thinking, Jeez, I'm a, I'm with these young lads that have been playing pretty high level footy. Yeah. Um, this is what I wanna do. Mm. And and um on the back of that there was like a NZ seventeens camp that we had. And that's sort of where I suppose the whole idea of training for a footy um, came about. And mm. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, your training ethic, you're a very good trainer. Like to be fair, like one of the best I've seen um, off the field. Your work ethic's sort of second to none. What were you like that even when you were younger? And when did you? When did that work ethic sort of start? <laughs> um, I was. I think it started like on the back of sort of those team, like making the rep teams. Yeah. Um, so even at that age, yeah, like I was a I was a wee chubby kid when I was um, a wee fella. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was one of like you know those big. There's always a couple big kids in the yeah, team, yeah. Like, especially playing league. You were one. I was one of those, and then obviously everyone catches up, and I probably went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then probably from fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, I started going to the gym with the old man, and I think. One thing that I I look back on now and sort of think it, it put me in good stead was all of that training I had to do I had to do by myself. Um, there was like no sort of unions pushing me or anything. It was yeah. just you go out, you go do your running, or you go run by yourself, you go to the gym by yourself. And uh, I think that put me in good stead and sort of developed some good habits. And yeah, that's sort of where it all started. And you're still sort of like that now, eh? Like you love that training by yourself. You've got a <laughs> gym in your house, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't mind the off season and that sort of stuff, eh? So those habits have taken you through your whole career. Yeah, I, yeah, like I say, I enjoy 
doing different things um, mm. and having the time to do it sort of by myself or um, in my own environment as such. And yeah, the gym at home helps. Uh, and I love going into 6'4 where, I, where the, my business partner, um, his gym is. And you just surround yourself with different people. It's a different challenge. Mm. And I think it's more the mental side of it too. Like I get so much out of it mentally just knowing that I can just train by myself and on the back of that I feel good and yeah yeah, yeah. I remember Pablo saying on his episode <laughs> that you're the hardest gymmer that he's ever met and <laughs> couldn't believe how much time you'd spend in the gym compared to someone like him but yeah. um, obviously everyone knows <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, he's a bit of a freak without the gym stuff <laughs> he goes awesome on the field and I remember yeah like probably the first time I saw him in the gym he was doing all rehab stuff and it was I was like, geez, you got a rig like that, and that's all you do. You're doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But your point of difference as a as a player coming through was always sort of your speed and your skill set. Um, was that the same as when you were young? Were you were you a back, or did you did you start off as a forward? You said you're chubby. Yeah, right? I was a chubby chubby wee boy. Um, no, I played loose head prop for oh, most did of you? my um, oh, time at Hodafanua College. Um, were you fast? I had a little bit of toe. I suppose I can thank my mum for that. She was a bit of a runner back in the day, but um, what, yeah, I like, uh, oh, she went. No, she went all right. Uh, yeah. She met the old boy and stopped. So, oh, that's true. <laughs> so, yeah, dad's yeah, she fell in love. But um, no, nah, there's <laughs> a bit of history there from the old, um, from mum and oh, yeah. um, and also her sister went to the Com Games for running, which is pretty cool. Mm. Um, and she probably oh, would like to say she would have done pretty well herself, but. Um, yeah, yeah, the old heart got the better of her, <laughs> eh? and luckily enough, because I'm here and yeah, and yeah. you're blessed with speed. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, nah, going back to that, I was yeah loose head prop, and then I sort of ventured into a bit of seven and stuff when I um went up to fielding high, I mainly played hooker, but seven was like the second position. Seems to be the thing if you don't grow any taller, you just end up at hooker as like yeah a potential loose forward and um. Yeah, that's it. Really. So, what was the reason behind the move to fielding? Oh, uh, just just the rugby stuff. I had the opportunity. I think it was twenty eighteen to come down. No, sorry, twenty eighteen. Jesus, uh, two thousand and nine. Yeah, to come down here um, post Horofnoa, finishing up seventh form. I was one of the young ones, so I oh, went back. Yeah. Second year seventh. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah one of those ones. Uh, and Braden Whitelock, um, being a, a bit of stalwart for fielding and. Uh, said, come up here for a year, play some decent footy, some decent first fifteens, and then. Well, was he the coach? He what was his role? he was more of a um, facilitator, recruitment, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> recruitment. There's a few, there's a few recruit recruitments going on. I think there still is. Um, those white locks, they they're good at what they do. Um, and I I knew of like Luke Whitelock. He was the same year as me. Yeah. Uh, he did, obviously didn't repeat, but. Uh, yeah, so I decided to go up there and board, and I think that put me in good stead for sort of leaving home, mm. uh, getting out of the van, challenging myself, and yeah, we played some decent first 15s, which gave me a taste of what that rugby is like, and I thought uh, on the back of that, it helped me sort of come down here the next year mm. and uh, just enjoy it, yeah. Did you make New Zealand schools, or? That year I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. so the year before, no, I played... I played against Australia for the Hurricane Schools, sort oh, of yeah. like as New Zealand was named. They we, they played like the regions. Oh, true. Um, yeah, we won that game actually. Um, this is what year oh nine oh eight. Yeah, geez, it's a while ago. Is now. it true you were goal kicking as well at that <laughs> schoolboy level? Or nah, is that a <laughs> oh, hey? no? Oh, it, that's a long, long, tea, long hey? time ago. Jeez, the old inductors would be no good now. <laughs> Um, gee, this is like club, young club days. Oh, yeah, was it? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. A bit of a gun off the tee. <laughs> <Yeah. Were you? laughs> the old road cone cut up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, not these days. Yeah, yeah. No, not these days. But would you back yourself um, 22 right in front <laughs> of one of those like penalty shootouts? Surely. Oh, surely I'm, I'm on the list somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jeez. And then the move down to Christchurch. Um, was that a hard decision for you? Obviously, you would probably had. A few teams chasing a goal kicking hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Heaps. <laughs> no. Um, no, I I uh, I had the l- chance to stay in one or two. Uh, Jason O'Halloran was oh, yeah. um, floating around, and sort of he came around home and had a yarn, uh, and also came that year. 
previous, I'd come down to Christchurch to look at the place. Matt Sexton was running the cutter back then with the academy, and I sort of decided, no, nah, I'll, I'll stay, and then I'd, I'd come down the following year. And oh, yeah. Yeah, it was it was a bit of a no-brainer, like, the way I saw it. Like, no offence to one or two, but um, at that time, I just thought, if I can come down to Canterbury and um, crack it down here against sort of what was the best province at the time, mm. uh, then... You know, I'm rubbing again. I'm rubbing my shoulders with the best, and it's going to make me a better player. And so that was, yeah, my whole decision, or why I made my decision. And then, yeah, came down, across the road, buddy, in the rugby <laughs> <In the> flats. <laughs> <laughs> There's some. Oh, jeez. Who were you living with back then? Who was it? Uh, um, I had oh, uh, Ash Parker, who's oh, yeah, a Canary yeah, player. Yeah. He's in Japan now. Uh, Joel, big Joel Everson. He was. Canary boy went to Japan, yeah, uh, and a young fella, uh, Andy Simmons from England, his oh, brother true. Matt Simmons, you know, oh, played yeah, for the yeah, Chiefs, yeah, yeah. and Tasman for a year too, I think. That was Andy. Oh, Andy, that would have been Andy, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Matty ran around for Canterbury. Oh yeah, Matt was London Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he went over back over home, and um, yeah, so those yeah all like really like pretty much my best mates now. And yeah, a couple of years or a year and or two with with those boys. Yeah, <laughs> in the rugby flats. <laughs> Some good stuff, yeah, good times. <laughs> and how did you find, like, going into the Canterbury setup? You obviously, back then, you would have had, what, Corey Flynn and stuff still, yeah. still around? Yeah, uh, now, Flynn, was awesome. He's been awesome uh, since day one, really, sort of took me under his wing, uh, told me what to do, what not to do, gave yeah. me a few rock ups when I needed it, and yeah. uh, also had, like, Quinton McDonald. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ben Fennell was running right, around yeah. then. So me and Benny were like, yeah, pretty much the academy boys and button heads for a while, but he's a top bugger and, yeah, work great. I think he's he's awesome at too. So mm. um, I just chipped away. It did take a long time to crack it, I think, but at the same time I, I think that put me in a, a good place sort of to where I'm at now. So Yeah, it's a hard one for hookers, eh, because mm. it does take a bit of time to... Yeah, work on your craft. Obviously, your line at your set piece. Yeah, um, scrumming is probably something that people don't really um, understand how hard that is for a hooker. But um, yeah, what do you? What was it like for you? Did you feel like you were good enough straight away, or what was your mindset going in? Yeah, I think in your head you think you're good enough. Yeah, um, definitely had that. Like why? Why am I in there? Sort of th- at the at the start. Um, but deep down, had absolutely no idea <laughs> what I was doing. I remember my first year of Wider's, uh, Wider squad with the Crusaders was 2011. Um, yeah, got an absolute high in pre season. And then, like, playing those, even just playing those games, like, nervous as hell. Yeah. But, like, oh, yeah, here we go. And then you get found out pretty quick that, yeah, you, yeah you've got a lot to learn. And even off train, like, training with that sort of, like, calibre of squad. You think back to them, them boys making the final that year with the against the Reds like Rito, Richie, mm. Brad Thorne. I yeah. was rubbing shoulders with those boys, and I was shitting myself pretty much every time I was in. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was it was an experience that I I'm grateful for, and yeah, yeah, I think from then I sort of thought, yeah, I've got a lot of work to do, yeah. set piece wise, and you know that never stops even today. That's still a work on. So, um, yeah, it was. Some tough times, but also um, put me in good stead. It must be intimidating having that sort of calibre of forwards <laughs> to throw the ball into in the line. I could imagine, like, I remember even, like, when my brother was at the Crusaders, he always felt like the backs were really friendly, but the forwards were, you know, pretty, yeah. like, old school. You had the likes of Thorny and all that. Who, yeah. Um, you know, were a bit harder to... Um, I guess have a joke around with, but yeah. I could imagine you lining up at line out time <laughs> just shitting your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I want to see it. And the worst thing is that they wouldn't even catch it because it wasn't <laughs> nowhere, nowhere near where it was meant to be. <laughs> but uh, no, oh, those those early days were, were very daunting. Like, uh, you know, the all black forwards, um, yeah. the backs like DC and that, Daggy even at that time. Yeah. T- like Toey. Toey seemed to be handle it all right, but he... Um, but when I first came to the squad, like as a wider training squad member, it was sort of seen that you weren't even like, <laughs> part of the squad, so you were chucked in the dungeon. Which oh, is true, different room, a different room. So oh, they yeah. were in the sheds, um, as the, the normal squad was in the sheds, and then you were chucked in another room. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember like 
going in there. It was like me, Tom Taylor, Sam Prattley, uh, <laughs> Brendan O'Connor, oh, like yeah. just players like that, and just you felt like an absolute dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then spoke like they used to come and shit in our toilet. <laughs> they used to come and use our toilet to go. Yeah. Oh, and you just oh yeah, that makes you feel even better. <laughs> um, but at the same, yeah, like you look back and you're like. Oh, yeah, fair enough. You yeah. know, you, who are you at that time of, in your career? And it, um, yeah, it makes you it makes you earn it and want it even more. Yeah, but times have changed since then, <laughs> eh? Like, I guess now, I mean, you're a lot more welcoming to these new guys coming yeah. through than what players used to be to to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think on the back of that is probably because a lot of them are playing younger these days too. Yeah, so, true. like, if you if they're going to be up with you in the on the battlefield, then you know they w- you want them to respect you, and also around the other way. And yeah. I also think they're l- um, a lot more professional these days. The young boys, mm. like the ones that are stepping up, like Macca and that, they're nineteen and they're yeah. getting cracks at super level. Like yeah, that's when I was playing my first preseason game and sh- absolutely shitting myself. So, <laughs> yeah. But I remember a preseason game uh, very early on, which where I first sort of noticed you. It was must have been Hurricanes <laughs> Crusaders, and you scored a try from about. <laughs> 60 yeah. metres, you're one-on-one with the fullback. I think I'd been subbed. And it was, I think it was Andre Taylor. And you just stood him up and ran around him. I was like, oh, thank God I wasn't still on then. Yeah. And I was like, jeez, he is fast. Who is that guy? <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I remember that pretty clearly. That was one of those moments you're like, oh, that felt good. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. I, I, I vividly remember Andre being there. And yeah. Yeah. Because he had a cracky season. That yeah, mate, oh, mate, he was yeah. playing some unreal footy, and he was he was fast. I was like, jeez, yeah. man, how fast is this guy? I think I think I just got him going the wrong way. It's, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened there. It's all a blur now. <laughs> You're still stressing about the line out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably had him hit six in a row. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But then you eventually obviously get your crack with the Crusaders. Um, talk me through your, like, sort of starting your debut for the Crusaders and how that all, that week sort of went. Um, yeah, that was 2013. I managed to debut. It was against the Kings, the Southern oh, Kings. Oh, was it? Yeah, Over yeah. there? No, it was, at, it was oh, yeah. at home. Yeah, yeah. Came off the bench. Um, nervous as hell. But, uh, yeah, it, it all went so fast, you know. It's just, it does, uh, you, you know what it's yeah. like. And then, uh, I think I played five games between 2013 and 2015, like bugger all. Oh, yeah. I think uh, Flinny may have got injured. Uh, once and that's why I played a few more but it did take a long time to crack it and I think it was on the back of um, them just thinking I needed more time I mm. um, always think that uh, I, you know Todd Blackheader and Dave Hewitt and all that were the coaches at the time and I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty grateful for the fact that they hung in there with me because yeah. probably those first couple of years they might have seen something but then had a lot of question marks and mm. um they hung in there with me and yeah, I managed to get a crack and then twenty fifteen, uh got a lot more game time, came off the bench at the start of the season and then sort of I suppose worked my way into starting a couple of games and off the back of that ended up going right off the back end of the season and yeah. Uh still like nervous as hell because like at that time there was still Richie and yeah. Rito and yeah. all that running around but uh, th- yeah, they were also like Help me step up, you know. They didn't make me feel like an idiot or mm, anything. Mm. Uh, and and yeah, th- those were some tough years in the Crusaders, but uh, also uh, hugely enjoyable because it was when I first got a crack. So. Yeah, were you ever tempted to change province or change change teams? Obviously, well, there's sort of a four year period where you're waiting, <laughs> you're feeling like you're ready, you you wanna you wanna play at that level. Did you ever yeah. feel tempted to leave, or were you always patient there? Um, and trust the sort of coaches like you say now. Yeah, no, I yeah, there was at one point I was real close to to leaving, changing provinces. Um, Hawks Bay actually offered a gig at the time, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah, they they threw a bit of tin at me. And yeah. as a young father, like, oh shit, this yeah. is gonna be this is nice. Uh, and it did take um, a bit of thinking and and sort of like the olds and a few people that you know trust that sort of said hang in there and mm. um, yeah that's another decision I think really paid off in the end nothing against Hawks Bay but yeah. um, it just made me sort of have to knuckle down and, and take it seriously and, and mm. off the back of that yeah and you said you mentioned sort of how 
like the first part of your Crusaders career was quite tough. You hadn't had much success with the Crusaders for that period, which was pretty unusual. <laughs> um, what sort of changed from that that run where you sort of had four or five years without much success to obviously where you are now, where you, you've yeah. won the last six? <laughs> um, oh, I don't want to be too ruthless, but I just think the detail that we had uh, – in terms of the our, our structure, our strat, all that sort of went up a level. Mm. I think when uh, like Ray stepped in and got a different team on board, but because you look back on those years and you'd say, "Sheesh, we probably had the greatest paper team that's ever been in Super Rugby," you yeah. know, with the back line, um, you know, Sonny Bill, Zach Gilford, yeah. Sean Maitland, all those boys, um, yeah, international pretty much team, and then. Yeah, we couldn't manage to bloody win a Super Rugby title. Mm. And I suppose off the back of having a team like that, that's why. But uh, once they, I don't know, I think when Ray came in, uh, there's just a level of detail that went up around the way we play. And uh, it just put us in good stead to bloody, you know, have a crack. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it, I think. Mm. And that first year, was it the first year Ray was in where you won it over in Joburg? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 2017. So, yeah, yeah, that's where the break dancing started. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and talk to me about your All Blacks um, career. Obviously, um, had plenty of caps for them now, but where did it start? What was your what was your debut? How'd you find out? Um, yeah, so 2015, that sort of same year that I started getting a bit more game time. Um, I remember. At the end of your do. <laughs> <laughs> Always seems to start at the end of your do. <laughs> yeah. Got um, the phone call, oh, end of your do. I absolutely had, hammered. Yeah. No, I didn't. I had no phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, I just remember Rito uh, sort of giving the, the old shoulder, like, um, you know, just subtly dropping in little hints here and there and didn't think much of it. Uh, and it's just like, shh. Yeah, is that a possibility? Like, oh, is yeah. he having me on? Like, he's not one of those guys to like bullshit <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, when he looks at you, you're like, "Fuck you!" He means something yeah. here. But um, yeah, and then oh, the announcement. Yeah, I was just out with the missus and got home. Didn't even watch it, and then phone like mo- most people, phone just goes nuts. And yeah. Then, I think half an hour later, I was over Rugby Park doing an interview and made the All Blacks and um, Jace Ryan that day he came straight around home because he's a Sydney boy from the club well, yeah. Christchurch club um, so I've known him for a long time uh, he he came around home and was like mate we're going for a beer and uh, there was a Sydney charity golf uh, event on that day so we went out there and had a beer with um, some of the club boys some of my best mates Joey McNichol and that and yeah. yeah I just remember sitting there like holy shit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah uh, I suppose you go into the first camp room with Kim Yalamu, you're like, this is real. <laughs> <laughs> not that he's the, like, he's not a scary boat, like, yeah. you definitely respect him, but, um, yeah, and I debuted in Christchurch, so uh, that was pretty cool to be able to say, you know, debuted at home against yeah. Argentina. Um, yeah, that, just a surreal, surreal moment, uh, doing haka, all that stuff, mm-hmm. and, yeah, something that you sort of never, never will forget. Did you not watch it because you didn't think you'd make it, or you just yeah, just too just nervous? Didn't, yeah, I no, I didn't think it was anything. Like True. after, <laughs> even after Reed, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, well, it was only a couple of remarks, <laughs> but you're like, no, nah, <laughs> you know, because at the time there were still real good hookers around. Yeah, you know, like there, yeah, like Colsey, Kebby, um, you know, Hickey Elliott was playing well yeah. that year, um, and yeah, I think. Those were the three plus me, so I reckon I was just a wee, um, a trial, sort of an amen at the time. Yeah. I think, uh, was it, yeah, like Nate Harris had been injured, so he, yeah, yeah, yeah missed out. Um, yeah. You obviously trialled well, though, when you got your <laughs> chance, because yeah. you've pretty much been in there since, and that was, from memory, 2015, that, so yeah. Rugby World Cup, yeah, a yeah. big year where they don't often take no. a punt on young guys, but... Mate, your form was that good that couldn't resist. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, no, I went all right in, against in my debut. Didn't do too much. Um, I suppose I got managed to get a wee meat pie. Um, 
which it's is good. Good, mate, <laughs> yeah. every week. <laughs> yeah. um, and then my second test is probably one of my most memorable tests, to be honest, because we went straight to South Africa after the um, RG game. And uh, for me, I felt like that was the real trial because they named me off the bench again. Uh, kept Colsey out, oh, sorry, Kevy out. And I, yeah, to me, that was like, oh, I know what they're doing here. Yeah. They, Give, they're going to troll and see how I go. If I shit the bed, then I'm probably gone. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think I got about 20 minutes in that game. It was a hell of an arm wrestle game. I don't know if you remember, Colsey scored a hell of an unreal try. Um, ran a short ball in and out of a few people oh, and yeah. under the sticks. That was his year when he was, like, killing, was killing it. it. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, it was a real close game. I think we were losing when we came on. We had a... Had a line out, five out, and it was, I believe it was, it was either called coffee or tea bag, can't remember. It the woodcock try. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like that, it's it sort of similar. Um, pretty much, it was like a six man line out, the prop turned and faced me to pretend to get it, oh, the, yeah. the pod went back and Rico was at half back, and yeah. he, he ran and we just threw it over the top. Oh. And I, yeah, I remember when they called. I was <laughs> like, it's not even like a big throw, but it's yeah. like, shit, here we go. <laughs> and we scored, and we managed to get in front. And I was like, fuck, that was the one of the best feelings I've had as an All Black. Just yeah. looking back on that, and yeah, I feel like those that moment sort of helped set me up to to get over on that that World Cup. Man, how good is that? Is it for a hooker? Is that sort of the biggest sort of stressor? Is it the line out time, <laughs> line out throws? We yeah. Uh, Sort of pre-game, you know, when you're thinking, like, as a goal kick, it's the goal kicks. Yeah. But, like, as a hooker, is it, geez, I just hope I can throw 100% yeah. line out and I've probably oh. had a good day. Yeah, oh, 100 is a great day. Um, <laughs> you know, I've had some, I've had my times where, and, yeah, still do, where it's, like, have shockers. But, um, yeah, it is. It's just that thing you're like, shit, I feel like, like, half a good game is just nailing your line out so yeah. whatever else happens. That's an extra True. bonus. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But then some hookers might be like, nah, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And is it is it like a mindset thing for you? Or like, do you know when you're going to have a good day at throwing? Or is it just one of those things that just depends how it comes out? Like? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's like goal kicking, I suppose. If yeah. you now the first one, it's sort of like, oh, it sets you up, you feel good, you get rhythm. Um, yeah, you stuff up the first two, you're like, oh shit, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're like good the old covers, but yeah, I think everyone goes through that. Yeah, mate, that's interesting. <laughs> and then obviously that year you make the Rugby World Cup, you're off to the UK with probably one of the best teams on paper yeah. there has been. Um, were you confident going to that Rugby World Cup? What was what was it like for you? Obviously you were young, you are behind Colsey yeah. and Kevy, but yeah. um, pretty cool team to be a part of yeah it was it was unreal like looking back uh you know named third hooker uh I sort of had it in my mind that I was over here just in case um only played one game or one test that whole world cup mm. um 80 against Namibia that's right how good got a late try <laughs> too late, didn't you late dot yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah um I think just the experience itself uh you know with the squad like that was sort of a time when the All Blacks were like everyone was like you're, you're playing the All Blacks this week, yeah. Um, and there was just a real sort of the fellows like a real chip on on their shoulder to go again, um, like all the senior boys. And geez, they played some good footy. Eh? Mm. It was it was pretty pretty awesome to be part of and watch full time um, pad holder. But <laughs> 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 um, I just remember that like sort of em embracing that role. I suppose um, would. Driven heavily by Liam Messam, mm. uh, he didn't he didn't play much either. And I just remember Thursday trainings were so intense, like the boys would get barred up, and yeah. then even the warm up before a test, like you'd hold the pad and you'd be giving yeah. it everything. Yeah. Um, and that was what we did. And you come off and like you wanted to be out there, but yeah. unless you know you you did your best to to help those boys. Mate, it's a massive role though. Eh? It's like <laughs> yeah. an underrated role in terms of how important it is to set up a team and yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously the better quality those guys are the better sort of prep you're getting and yeah yeah I think earlier on in my career probably when I thought I could play I probably didn't do that in, in this environment Crusaders but uh yeah you do learn that no that's that's pretty selfish mm. you're, you're part of the squad and you want to be successful as a whole so yeah and were you confident that they're always going to win that 
like watching from the sideline as a as a fan, I guess. Uh, the South Africa test was probably the one where you're like this could go any way, mm. just because of the way they they were playing as well. Uh, but the yeah, the tone was set pretty early in that game. I remember Rito, he was right up for it. He put a mean hit on. Um, and then yeah, we it was pretty pretty close that game. I can't remember the exact score, but um, yeah, and then playing Aussie just felt like the boys were they were on. Yeah, they were on. Yeah, yeah, and they yeah, came out pretty hissing. And what's the celebrations like after that for you as a oh, young yeah. <laughs> young guy who obviously played your part? But, um, <laughs> yeah. Oh. If, I, if there was a tournament for that, maybe it would have, <laughs> <laughs> it might have made play him. No, no. Oh, it was awesome. Um, yeah, we were at Penny Hill Park when we, um, our last week there. So that's where England stay uh, for their test weeks. And yeah, yeah, there would have been a few room bills there. <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, couple of days after the final. And then not much sleep had when we, even from then to get home. Because yeah. we had to travel around the cities and it was Auckland, Wellington. And all the, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was some good times. <laughs> then fast forwarding four years to the 2019 Rugby World Cup, um, how did that compare to you? Obviously, you'd worked your way into sort of the starting hooker yeah. role. Um, what was the pressure like? What was that sort of team environment like going in? Um, no, I felt good at the time. I, yeah, I think we were we were in a pretty good place. Um, it definitely was different. Uh, I suppose there's a little bit of, not less edge like about the squad. I think that was just because in 2015, like me looking up at the players, yeah. sort of like, she's. Um, but I feel like we're in a good place. We had a couple sort of average games in pool play and that, but it, um, yeah, I look at like that semi final week. It was it was a different one. I eh? uh, I just remember thinking like. Well, we just played Ar- like played Ireland in the quarter. Had unreal a game, had an unreal know, yeah. game. Boys were like that whole week was huge, like because we'd lost to them. Mm. The year, was it year before in Chicago? Um, so the intensity of that week was was huge. And then we came into the English week, and I just remember sort of like the language being around. Um, it's it's all right. You don't have to be at that level this week to get the job done. And uh, I always sort of look back on that like. I think we really needed to somehow get some more edge out of us because, as we all know, that that game was pretty. Yeah, it's interesting. Pretty flat yeah. from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, that's the way I see it. Like, yeah, it was just we we lacked edge. England, you know, talking to Hindo now in this yeah. environment, he's like, that was their Ireland week yeah. where they were like, like we're right up because we'd beaten them the year before in, in Twickenham. So yeah. yeah, it's just funny how much like that mental edge. Mm comes into play for a test yeah. massively yeah. Yeah, yeah did you feel it out there like on the field were you yeah. were you thinking how how can we yeah get, oh get it just felt like we were just like holy shit like yeah. what are we gonna do um because we talked about all week we knew that England would start well they had first 20 minutes is their best 20 minutes they play they just come yeah. out hissing and um yeah they scored like pretty much straight away and we're like oh like, we're just <laughs> Gave them everything they wanted that we already talked about. So, yeah, it was tough. And, yeah, again, talking to high nose, like our D plan was so simple. It was just, yeah. didn't matter how many numbers you had out the edge, we were just coming at you. Yeah. And, like, yeah, I remember vividly as an underhill, the seven mm. at the time, he was just popping people. Yeah. And, um, yeah, there was just so much pressure there to, you know, yeah, we obviously didn't didn't do very well. Mm. Do you Did you feel that pressure? Do you feel the pressure of, the sort of nation going into tournaments like that and sort of how do you cope with that? Yeah, yeah, you, you do. Being from, like, here in New yeah, Zealand, yeah, 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 there's a lot of scrutiny and, you know, rightly so, you know, there's a lot of history there around being successful and stuff and, um, yeah, I you, they ride, you ride you no matter what, if that makes sense, you know. Mm. If you're successful, then they pump your tyres and if you're not, they've <laughs> yeah. got the knife out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of pressure there, but... Um, yeah, we love it. It's what we do, and you have to expect that. How do you keep it sort of on oh, that level, that level ground? Not sort of, oh. you know, listen yeah. to your own hype or listen to the sort of yeah. backstabs as well. How do you? What's your secret to keeping so level headed? Um, oh, it's tough. Like I think for me personally, last year was a real tough year. Mm. Um, 
mentally like I knew there's a lot of scrutiny there and I had to had to uh, answer a few questions and I feel like I got there in the end um but yeah you you the key is probably social media is stay off there yeah so everyone's answer I suppose but um yeah they say watch your highlights because it makes you feel good yeah um which does but uh <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, in terms of that, when it's all not going too well, I think the key is just not listening to people that don't know you that well. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How hard do you find it? Because everyone's you're obviously on social media. How hard do you find it to stay away from the <laughs> those articles which you probably get tagged in and yeah. all this sort of oh, stuff? You get comments and yeah. good old DMs. <laughs> yeah. They they go good. <laughs> no, I, I yeah, I just don't open them. Um, I'm pretty a bit of a selfless. Like if we come off, if I've just lost a game, I'll stay on Instagram for a couple of days, yeah. or, or at least not open anything that I know is going to be um, negative. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Well, I'm thinking back to the is it was it the Argentina game mm. where you had the you had a throw. Yeah. <laughs> One of the, what, what was that like to sort of come back from or sort of go through? Yeah, that was yeah, um, that was tough, real tough. Um, yeah, I just remember thinking, oh, I was pretty down in the dumps after that. Mm. Uh, even before that, you know, I hadn't played particularly well and then had an opportunity to play against RG. And then, yeah, that was that's probably one of my lowest feelings I've had in an all-back jersey, to be honest, is on a personal level. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, like uh, my family, they could tell I was under it. Um, and then I just had to regroup, uh, re- recoup, sorry, and... Um, you know, connected with some people around, like Kerry Evans. He's a mental, yeah. s- uh, mental skills guy. He was awesome, and uh, yeah, it took a lot of sort of soul searching and looking in the mirror. And um, but uh, on the back of that, it it set up myself around like I had a lot of drive to mm. to to answer, uh, you know, right the wrongs, and felt like the India tour. I got to a pretty good place, and yeah, just. Mm. Yeah, what sort of stuff does he take you through? Like, I'd be interested to like you've got the <laughs> mental skills wizard. I've heard a lot about him. Yeah, I've never actually spoken to him or anything, but um, heard good things. What sort of stuff did he take you through to sort of get through that all? And like you say, you're playing some outstanding footy at the back end. Yeah, um, he keeps it real simple. Surprisingly, like he'll he'll ask ask a few questions around like oh, just ones that you like get a bit startled. You're like, Shit, yeah, he's got me here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he was surprisingly all, like good for me around just keeping it real simple. He was like, you know, for example, you now you stuff up the next two throws. Who gives a shit? You can yeah. still play rugby. Yeah, you can still get the next task right. And mm. um, a lot of visualization stuff. Um, we've all heard that. And uh, he just sort of went through. We have a thing called Hogan's where you like work out your personality and. Um, he went through that with me and sort of pretty much told me who I am as a person and I was like just sitting there like, holy shit, <laughs> <laughs> he knows me too well. Like, uh, just things like, uh, oh, I don't know, I, I've got high scepticism, so oh, yeah. um, t- someone tells me something, I'll be like, it takes me a while to yeah. to believe in it. Um, and then like, I've got real low process, so having a process for me is like probably – the worst thing I can do because it gets me in my head. I've yeah. just got to have a couple steps, boom, and then I'm out of my head. And okay. um, bringing energy is another one. Like voice and energy is when I play my best footy. So that was a couple of things he drove for me, and yeah, it seemed to work. Mate, how good! And look at you now, <laughs> mate. You're on absolute fire. <laughs> yeah, talking too much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's interesting. So I am. I'm keen to hear a little bit more about like that when you get through those those patches like the social media um when you're in that patch how do you you've sort of spoken about it but how you feel like around your teammates um I know when you've had a bad game like you just feel so shit you go yeah. back you've obviously got kids yeah. now who are probably quick to help you get out of that but turning up to training and all those sort of things like yeah. people judging you how did how did you feel sort of from that perspective uh, I think oh, you feel pretty small when you yeah you're in the the, the high performance environment when you haven't nailed it. Mm. Um, for me, tendency or probably like most people is just to go quiet, and that's the worst thing I can do. Yeah. No, like I say, I've got a family now, so it's 
pretty easy to forget about rugby when you're with them. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you've always got this little thought in the back of your head. And my wife knows it because she, she played rugby herself, but she just she knows when I'm off. True. Um, I didn't know she played rugby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's a code head. Wow. That's <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Um, Mata too. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> just Canterbury back then. Um, but yeah, so. No, it, it's a lonely. It can be a lonely place. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I have drawn off the energy of my family and my kids. Like they, they couldn't give a sh- like a yeah, shit. Yeah. I mean, the wee man loves code. Yeah. As does yours, and um, he's always coming at me when we lose. But <laughs> 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 uh, but uh, they also put things into perspective. Like yeah. we just we're out there playing a game, and, and that's the uh, reality of it. But we put so much more emphasis on that because it's what we do as a job and you don't want to stuff up. Mm. Yeah, mate, it's, it's so true, eh? Like, when you're not playing well, it, it's so hard to then be talking all this stuff and, like, meetings and stuff yeah. or, like, driving things when you know deep down you're not playing well. It's, yeah. Like you say, you do instantly try and you do instantly go quiet, but, like you say, it's also not the best thing to do. still need to yeah. drive those standards. I think the key for that is, like, what I've learned since all well, last year, in particular is just you just have to own it like mm. you have to be like yeah I'm playing shit but what am I going to do about it now and yeah. setting yourself up around a few key goals that you want to get out of it and just keep working yeah just, yeah. and it is such small margins eh? especially mm. for for a hooker like a couple of slightly off throws and yeah. you can feel like you had a bad game yeah, whereas yeah. the reality <laughs> is it's like such small margins that yeah you're not actually a bad player now you just missed a couple of throws <laughs> or something yeah 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 definitely yeah so what's your um, what's your plans going forward? Obviously, yeah, you've signed a long term deal in New Zealand, eh? Um, was it three more years or? Uh, yeah, twenty twenty five. Yeah, so, geez, yeah. That's um, good stuff. No, I haven't I haven't put too much thought into that. I have, you know, overseas does sound interesting, but at the same time, given the age of my kids, like I, mm. I've personally, some people are different. I uh, find it hard to think that they'd go to like a foreign or. A, a different school, yeah. and like in Japan or whatever, and um, yeah, France would be a pretty cool experience. A lot of rugby played, but mm. uh, yeah, I'm pretty open. Like my body feels good. I feel like I'm still playing at a level that's um, you know high. And I mean, if I get to the end of twenty twenty five, and I'll probably re uh, evaluate. But yeah, there's nothing stopping me from wanting to hang around and. Mm. <laughs> Who you haven't knows? got a sabbatical or anything. You're here till 2025, uh, is it? No, I, I do have a sabbatical post this world, oh, like true. post 2023. So, yeah, um, yeah, open to opportunities there. Uh, but if yeah, if nothing, sort of, I'd happily just roll out in super and get yeah. stuck in again. Um, or there is the option of just having six months off and. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. So we'll see what happens. What would you do in that six months? Just. Grow a collapse Cl- into collapse. A massive business. Drive the missus nuts. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. I'd, yeah, I'd probably just have a six month pre season saying stupid like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I say, I enjoyed I enjoyed the training side of things. Yeah. So I just totally dabble in saying different crossfit. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So well, you'll make that decision post World Cup on what you're going to do. Um, or I'd like to say I have a have an idea of what I want to be doing in the next what few months but you know opportunities are few and far these days for hookers especially mm. like if you want to go to japan um flooded market flooded market yeah. and, and uh they don't want a hooker they probably want some rasley back so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, you could be both flanker maybe <laughs> goal kicking <hooker. laughs> bring back the goal kicking <laughs> jeez no <Nah. laughs> yeah oh true that's interesting that even like uh, an all black legend is still Struggling to get a gig in Japan. Yeah, well, you know, you've been over there. Um, I think it's a common thing for even, like, not just All Blacks, like most international players now. Mm. I think when I last heard, there was only a couple more spots left before next season rolls around. So, yeah, and at the same time, like, no to lie, the money has to be good to want to leave. Yeah, you know, it's move the whole family. We've got a yeah. pretty good lifestyle over here. Do you like what? <laughs> Rugby Park's right. 12 minutes from home. Um, and what a home it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really lucky there. The <laughs> golf course and stuff, yeah. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting decisions. But you, you said you played um, league at the start of your <laughs> sort of career. Have you ever oh. had any twitches or urges to go to league? I know you're a big yeah. Warriors man. <laughs> Especially or, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all are. Keep the faith, <laughs> man. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'd love to have a crack at league, but yeah, I'm 32 now. <laughs> the old battler. Yeah. Daddy, Kevin Camp, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be pretty awesome, though. Brett Kamali was my favourite player. Oh, was he growing yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. True. Melbourne Storm. Yeah. Even though I used to go watch the Broncos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mate, Kamali in the house. Yeah, yeah Kamali. <laughs> He's actually didn't even say hello to me when I was, wanted an autograph. I still remember that. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah, I was gutted. How old were you? Oh, jeez, I would have been like nine or ten. My coach's mother had something to do with um, the re- Queensland and the Broncos, so we managed to get down to a New South training. And, yeah. Um, yeah, got snubbed at the bus. Oh, that's <laughs> it was, brutal. That's it was, it was brutal. But it's crazy that that one little moment you've remembered for like the rest of your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. That's why, like, even like you're sort of in a swimming position now. Like, you like to say you'd never do that. Yeah. But, oh, you get it at the same time. Like, you're in the other side of it. You're yeah. like, sometimes you just want to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, one thing you've always done, you're always, you're always good with your time with kids, I know. <laughs> Try to You've be, had yeah. a big effect on my boy Toby, who <laughs> Hopes. was an ex Geordie Barrett number one <laughs> fan. Now he's quickly <laughs> changed to Luca's dad, Cody Taylor. <laughs> I owe Luca all that, I think. <laughs> Play dates, it's the soccer in the yard. <laughs> yeah. oh, nah, good stuff. So NRL um, sabbatical, potentially, if the right... Yeah. Team comes calling. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Um, now every player says that though. Eh? They they love to sort of give it a go, see how it fits. But yeah. it's just the the logistics of it are quite hard, eh, to sort of make it happen. Yeah, like um, Ash was one of my best mates. He's been over there for about ten, twelve years now, and yeah, he's because he's been immersed in it. It's nothing for him, but uh, you know, I've been to his house and I look and I'm like. He has two kids in this thing, and yeah, <laughs> so how did they do it? And yeah, yeah, no, like no yard. I know you make do, mm. and um, you do, yeah, you do, but uh, yeah, you got to convince the other half too. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> That's other the thing. real sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because if they're not happy, geez, you know that it does affect the footy. Yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. life for yeah. sure. And what about post footy? Obviously, you've dabbled into business. Yeah. yeah. You're on your way there. Is that sort of where you see yourself um, post footy? To be honest, I don't really have a clue. Like I'd love to say that this is going well with the Eclipse stuff, and um, I've always said that I'd, I'd go get on the tools. My brother's a builder, and I do really enjoy pr- the property side of things. Yeah. And, um, my ultimate would be to have one whole year off and just renovate a house or something. That yeah. would be if I could have the way I want it. That would probably be what I do for the first year, and then. Who knows? Become a flipper. I don't know. Yeah, so you're pretty handy with, on the tools. Oh. You could you could do up a house by by oh, yourself. Get on a brush, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whack a few nails. But no, I I think I just enjoy um, trying doing new things and yeah, um, you know, build a deck or something. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. But yeah. Yeah, the, the house enough, might not mate. be plumb, but it's <laughs> <laughs> so buying all these houses without a deck and <laughs> building a deck and flipping it. <laughs> flip it on as is. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, Baz, does that excite you though? Or post footy? You obviously got a few more years left, but like post footy, how do you feel about it? Obviously, speaking to Timmy Bateman recently, and all the message yeah. I've, messages I've had around that is how nervous yeah. guys are about it and how much they sort of struggle through it. But yeah, I think you're you're going to be all right. Just yeah. how you're going? Yeah, like I, you know, Timmy Bateman's a prime example of someone that. Did it while he was playing and, yeah. and set him set himself up, not through lack of hardship or anything. He's had his times, but um, no, I I think I, to be honest, yeah, if I had to walk away from the game, I'd be pretty content mm. around um what I've got away from footy. Um, huge like family man, I wouldn't mind even being a house husband for yeah. a bit and loose go back to to working. To uh, matter too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she go back to go back to the wing. Nah, <laughs> she hates a high ball, mate. <laughs> that was that was her thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Um but nah, yeah. My kids will be my drive I think from now on and as long as I can I don't know, dabble in a bit of exercise and, and um 
Yeah, watch him grow up. I'll be pretty happy, eh? Yeah, mm. mate. I could see you owning like a gym or some sort of <laughs> wellness center or I'd something. I'd love like it. That, hey, I would love that. Yeah, but I don't want to. Don't want to cut out studios. <laughs> <laughs> take, <laughs> take away mate, from them. Yeah, mate, you're the perfect extension for them. But. <laughs> mate, as always, we have gone to our Instagram for some questions. I've written them down. Um, you had I mean, thousands come through. You're such a such a celebrity. Um, but I've had heaps. I've, I've cut it down to a few good ones. But first question, this guy sort of came up on a few of them, but how do you wind up Dane Coles? <laughs> <laughs> There's a few around What's it like Playing him And that All that sort of stuff But oh. Kelsey's obviously A Waterland favourite Yeah he's a top boat He's a great man Off the field At times I've questioned That on the field <laughs> <laughs> Not against me though Because he's, he's a, He is a good bugger To me Yeah um, you guys I've never really seen You guys going at it eh? and Nah I think we've had Like one tiny Little thing Was at home uh, Against them A few years ago Um can't even remember what that was about. Scooter might have been involved in that, actually. Oh, um, yeah. But, uh, geez, if you want to wind him up, just freaking knee him in a ruck or something. <laughs> <laughs> it does not take much. <laughs> you could tickle him and he'll be wound up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, how come, how come he sort of doesn't go after you ever? You guys got a oh, relationship nah, from the All Blacks or you made a truce early on? <laughs> nah, just two Noah boys. Two oh, yeah, Noah boys. Okay. I got a, yeah, he came to my little 18th shindig. I oh, did it. True. Oh, so you guys go way back. Yeah, we go way back. Um, I was playing sevens for Horfanoa, um, and his all like three of his best mates were in the team. Oh, like Warwick Lim there. Yeah, Wizzer oh. and Stubbs and that. And uh, yeah, so that's where I met Colsey per- on a personal level, and he, he ended up coming to like a wee piss up at home or like a drinking yeah. session at home and yeah. 18th uh, birthday party. Yeah. Um, Oh, right, that would have been a do. <laughs> <laughs> in Levin at home in the garage. <laughs> then we went to Molotov. <laughs> so are you a claw brother? No, no, she's no, no, I'm not. Never got that he's, tight. He's, um, <laughs> he's the south of the north, so yeah, not that tight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Okay, next one. Um, if you could play any other position, what would it be and why? I'd love to play twelve. I Would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be quite, quite cool. To just, I don't know. That's sort of on the fringe of uh, the playmaker. There, get the ball in the yeah. hands a bit more. And yeah, yeah. Be like a Nani Lal Mape <laughs> type <laughs> twelve, I reckon. Hit him up. Jeez, that little unit. Nah, I don't know. Yeah, I just feel like that'd be a good, good position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to get that out there for any Japan clubs <laughs> yeah. needing a twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Who might need on a the one two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, do you ever get mad at the locks if they drop the ball at line-out time? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not often it's their fault, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, if it's close enough. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, uh, probably the... I actually got mad at Richie McCall once. He um, dropped the line-out to the back dead cold, and I was... Because I was so nervous <laughs> throwing yeah. to him, and it was a perfect seed, and then yeah. he dropped it cold, and it was the first time I was like... Did you spray him? No, I didn't spray him, but just, you know, that look. I would never spray with him before. <laughs> you get that clear. Jeez. <laughs> There's no way I've been the right to do that. But, um, yeah, yeah. Just gave a wee so. evil and free <laughs> under <laughs> you. And then I said sorry. <laughs> no, no. Oh, that's classic. Okay, would you ever play a game for Horror Fin or Kapiti? Oh, I was, yeah, funny enough, I was so close last year to having a crack for oh, no yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I think just the way that um, sort of games panned out, it almost worked out for both me and Colsey to have a run. Um, and I actually, I don't know, oh, it's all right. I've um, got it in my Canterbury contract to, if it works in terms of availability. If they've got good enough squad members, I can go play for the NOAA. So True. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got that in a couple of years ago and, yeah, just waiting for the opportunity to do it. All oh, right, how good would that be? Yeah, the yeah. Sell out Levin <laughs> for sure. Back to the domain. So you and Colsey were going to do it together? Well, I think he's got the same thing. Oh, so, yeah. Um, and, yeah, last year it almost worked out. Uh, but I've, yeah, we've always joked, like, oh, yeah. we have to both go back and yeah. one can play hooker, one can play flanker or, or something. Or 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or 12, 10, 12 combo. <laughs> I'll kick the goals. <laughs> nah. <laughs> So that's mainly got to work out around the All Blacks schedule then, or they have to release you? Uh, Foz, Foz was fine with it, eh? Oh, like, yeah. Um, 
yeah, it was. It's more around the Canterbury. Uh, yeah, the the time frames of games, and then Canterbury having you know sufficient yeah. hookers or whatever, and there's some couple, couple young guns. So well, surely fun. Canterbury aren't sort of relying on you for their squad. No, nah, those are the thing. never available anyway yeah. with the All Blacks. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, there is a likelihood of that, um, but it would have to yeah pan out. Well, there you go, horror Fenua fans. <laughs> Want to get experience something absolutely special. Okay, next one. Can you ask him why he got horror Fenua Kapiti banned from the Wayanay Hotel in Poverty Bay? Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Wayanay Bay. Oh, is it Wayanay? <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. The hotel in... Poverty Bay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we're going back. That was not me. How <laughs> was it not? No, nah, we had an under 18 tournament up in Poverty Bay, and um, you know what? <laughs> Heartland <laughs> <laughs> under 18 teams. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, we're in like some motel, and oh, we had a court session, and I think by the end of it, people were running around nude on the <laughs> beach. <laughs> um, and then the rooms were an absolute pit, and yeah, there was a massive bill at the end. And True. but that wasn't me, G. <laughs> <laughs> Is that from like Ethan Pollock or something? Oh, I haven't got Don't the name. Know. But probably Big Polly, was it him? <laughs> <laughs> Might yeah. be Sam Hayes, even. Oh, yeah, few of the lads, anyway. Okay, best story slash memory playing for the bus drivers. Oh, buses. Sydenham. What a team! Uh, oh, I wouldn't. The best times was lip sync. We had a, a lip sync as club rooms uh, thing where teams go in and they obviously lip sync songs and yeah. it's a uh, competition. Those nights are always fun at, uh, at the bussies down at the cashier club. But uh, what do you do? What's your? Um, oh, have you, you got to dance. I did it for Colts one year. Yeah. Um, what song? Oh no, I did it for Div One. Sorry, we did Beyonce. Um, Single ladies. I think it Did was. <laughs> oh, I could imagine you doing that. <laughs> it was not the main character. But um that's a good night, but no, I think semi final we played Brighton was probably one of my most memorable memorable games. We had a pretty good team with Tyler Bindle running the cutter. Oh, was that it? was in twenty fourteen. And um yeah, boys put on a show and made the final and then Bluey didn't play the finals. So oh, lost <laughs> we'll, it. Well but um Hold that against them. <laughs> Where you go, kicking me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was the year they made the final. We made the final against the Taz, and that was his last year before he went to Ireland. Oh, so, yeah, I understand. It's like, <laughs> mate, you could have won us the final. Mate, it was we needed there. you. Steer the ship. Oh, good times with the bus drivers. Okay, next one. Who do you think the best hooker in world rugby is at the moment, and why? Oh, at the moment. It's tough, eh? It is tough. Uh, oh, I think those Six Nations boys, I, I wouldn't have. One in particular that much, and he's playing pretty good footy. Dan Sheehan, he's mm. going to Ireland. Mm. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, like I said, like Malcolm Marks, who's a pretty <laughs> good eh? formidable he's player. He's a mess, like he's a unit. He does not look like a hooker. Yeah. He's like 6'3 or something. And, um, but no, I think, yeah, from the previous games, I'd say Dan's playing pretty good for mm. Ireland. Yeah. Huh? He's enough. only young, too. Is he? How old is he? Oh, is that 23, 24 oh, maybe? Plenty of years there. Okay, next one. Scott's on, thoughts on Sko Rowe becoming the AB's head coach. I've never heard the nickname Sko, Sko, Sko Rowe. Rowe, but <laughs> guessing fan. that's Razor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, he'll, he'll, he'll have his own flavour to it. I think uh, he's um, he's good at what he does. He's great at me managing people. I think I've said mm. this before in like media and stuff, but... I think that's his gift, his ability to connect with both the higher sort of um, suits of the franchise yeah. or of the union and also the, the coaching group and players. Uh, drives mindset and theme really well and just adds his little bit here and there. Mm. He's a character. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. for you. Good for you, him getting the role, do you think? like um, He's obviously a big fan of yours. you got oh, three more years I'd love to, love to be able to play under him. Um, you know, to get an opportunity to play with them at that level would be mm. pretty cool. Be interesting to see, you know, like from being with them in this environment to that mm. environment, what Changes what challenges there, yeah. he would have, because um, it is different. Mm. But um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Mm. Be nice, mate. Looking forward to it. Okay, what advice do you have for a hooker who wants to play professionally? Oh, just oh, never stop working, throwing those seeds. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's what we measured on as as a hooker. Uh, 
because he said it before, but I feel like I'm, yeah, I agree around like an undervalued position. I feel because it's such a key role to um, helping a team be successful. You know, it's a pretty specific skill to have, mm. and um, it never it, it it's never perfected. I think you know. I was just thinking like Steph Curry is still working on his shot to this day, and yeah. it's unbelievable. So yeah, you can never stop. Mate, like that and. About the value, I think that's good for Japan clubs to know <laughs> yeah. as well, mate. I'm it's a, <laughs> it is an undervalued position, though, eh? If you can't win your line out, yeah, you're, yeah. you're going to have a long day at the office. Yeah, yeah. So Get hookers paid more. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, is there anyone you've been genuinely scared to tackle? Uh, scared to tackle, jeez. Nah, not, nah, scared. Scared's the wrong word, isn't it's it? It's sort of like, oh, <laughs> shit, here he comes. Yeah. Uh, I think I had to take a Will Skelton on a short ball, and that was pretty... <laughs> that yeah, was like, he is massive, He eh? is massive, yeah. yeah. But probably today's day, geez, boy's getting bigger. Big to Mighty Williams would be pretty mm. tough to tackle on a short ball. But Some yeah. big boys around. Do you find it... Are they the hardest guys for you? Like, the, is it the big guys? Well, or? It's, no, it's those, n- like, nuggety, like, Nani, for oh, example. Like Nani, you yeah. know, those boys are tough to tackle because they're just... in the, the GM brothers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a, they're just so, like, hard. Yeah. F- Mussy, hard-boned, and it's, like, just little little hips of doom, <laughs> eh? <laughs> <laughs> Boom, see ya. You would have had to have Nani off the back of the... Because you're off the back of the line. You yeah. would have had him coming at you oh, a few times. Oh, a couple of times. We've had a good, good couple of run-ins, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's always always love off the field, eh? But yeah. on the field, it's always yeah. giving each other <laughs> shit. Oh, good work. Okay, next one. Um, which team are you least... Which team would you least like to face in the Rugby World Cup final? Oh, least. Uh, oh, it's probably... France would be just given it's in France like they're yeah. they're playing great footy too I think well they second in the world rankings so yeah home crowd it's uh yeah I think that would be probably the one of the greatest experiences you'll have uh, if that was the case because of being at home and yeah just playing there in the past even um, for just like test matches the crowd is pretty nuts yeah eh? and they will get the flags out and stuff yeah yeah so. Um, that would yeah, that would be a huge challenge, I reckon. Mm. Mm. How are you feeling going into that rugby world cup? Oh, it's. I feel like it's so like there's no clear um, country that's yeah. sort of favourites at the yeah, moment. It's like, so open, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Like on, you know, on your day, anyone can beat anyone. Um, definitely feel like we're not at our level that you know we've been in previous world cups mm. in terms of the. Um, thought around us or the mm. perception. Mm. Um, so it'd be interesting. French France round one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're, what a way we're to walking start into it, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. But you're confident in the squad and in the in your ability yeah. for, as a team to still get the job done, even though, like you say, the I guess it's the aura around the All Blacks at the moment isn't like where it's been previously heading into it. But you're yeah. still quietly confident you'll be able to get the job done. I think so. I think off the back of last year's work that we did, um, like we got to a place where we were playing some good footy. Mm. And with the game, the great thing about it was like pretty simple stuff that was changed. And although we didn't win that last test, like we put ourselves in a hell of a spot to have a dominant performance. And then, yeah, we drew it. But mm. um, there's some good things off the back of that. I think we sort out a couple more things and we'll be right. You know, I always say defence wins championships mm. and. I think if we can get that stuff right, we'll be in a good place. Mm, exciting times for All Black mm. fans. I'll be loving that. Okay, next one. This one was a, just a statement, loves an 8%. I've heard this pop up a few <laughs> times, but obviously you do love a good 8%. <laughs> <laughs> is that an 8% diesel? What is, what's oh, that one? Man, I what's can, your go-to? I cannot drink <laughs> bourbon and Cokes. Oh, yeah. That would be the last thing <laughs> i touch. <laughs> is that what it is, the 8% bourbon? I'm assuming, <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I'm um, Space Summit, man. <laughs> yeah, oh, I want a flag. Hey. Yeah. Okay, next one. Throughout your career, who has who has gone the best on the diesel? <laughs> you would have had a fair few do's, 12 years. Oh, I've had a few. All the way from 
I one guess of the, yeah. Fenua, under 18s. <laughs> a few of those. Oh, pretty bad. <laughs> no, they're the worst. <laughs> um, geez, one of the most impressive people that can just keep sort of going and fall asleep and wake up and keep going <laughs> is Matt Todd. Oh, Matt, Matt Todd. Todd. Is he? Yeah, he's um, funny. He turns into like a little T-Rex with his arms <laughs> come up like this. <laughs> just to fall asleep on the, the couch. And he'll still be holding a handle and you'll be like, Toddy! And he'll like, over. <laughs> wake up and have a slip. And yeah, he's always there True. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awake or asleep, Toddy <laughs> just... You don't know because his eyes are like <laughs> just the same the whole time. Yeah. Oh man, I wouldn't have picked uh, Toddy <laughs> as one of the greats, but yeah. mate, he's someone I need to get on actually. He is a legend. Yeah, he's a top bloke. Okay, next one. What's the biggest prank you've pulled on a teammate? I didn't know you were a big prankster. <laughs> no, but no, no, I'm sorry, I've got nothing here. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm far from one of the funny ones or the, the pranksters. <laughs> <laughs> Never done one. <laughs> no. Oh, I was looking forward to that one. Okay, next one. Favourite try. Now, this will be probably your hardest one. You scored about a thousand. <laughs> oh, jeez. How far? We, oh, one of them would have to be that Lions try, uh, the try scored against the Lions in the first test, um, just on the edge there. I only had to run it in Talk five, me through five it. Five metres. Uh, oh, it's probably more around the hype of what the Lions series yeah. is like. Um, unfortunately, Colsey was injured, so I got a great opportunity there to play, and I was, yeah, again, like real nervous, and we've called for the tap and go. It wasn't even really on, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Nuggies just slung it wide, Daggers swung it to me, and threw it at my toes and I've had, to, <laughs> I've had to pick it up somehow and then just dart in the corner and I was pretty hyped about that I think you can see it in the in the highlighter I think I throw the ball up and give a big chahoo yeah. oh, but man. that was just the yeah, on the back of the week and the occasion and yeah the opportunity I was pretty pumped up mate what a try I love that okay how much does breathing how much do you do how much breath work do you do throughout your season uh yeah, well, this is something I've only done for probably the last couple of years. I work with Nigel Beach. Um, I don't know if you heard about him. He works yeah. with Wim Hof. Yeah, was it? Uh, and there's a guy, Patrick McCown from Ireland, who's got some good stuff around performance breathing. Uh, I do a few sessions a week, like oh, anyway, from two to four. Um, but it's it's all just uh, based on like breath holds and, mm. and stuff. Ones for recovery, ones for breath holds for performance and stuff. And I was doing a lot last, was it last year? Um, some running, breathing work, which is quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we won't get into the detail of it, but uh, I find it does help, like, mm. in terms of being able to keep going without with less oxygen, and um, especially that uh, recovery breathing, like the Wim Hof stuff. Mm. Is, some people think I'm stupid, but... Uh, mate, you're ahead <laughs> of the game, mate, <laughs> aren't some, you? There's something there. We actually had to do it for the World Cup in 2019, and... On Fridays before the game, and oh, true. there was a lot of um, kickback from that day. Eh? Yeah, um, which I get. Like it's not for everyone, but uh, I find that pretty. Yeah, Mate, any chance to get an edge? Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just something different. Because you, know? you also you sauna regular, you into your colds. You, yeah, you do you do pretty much everything <laughs> you, you everything can. <laughs> crack. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love I love a sauna. I'm in sauna most nights, and then. Uh, Cold immersion is something that, yeah, it's tough, but mm. yeah, the old cold shower and stuff is, yeah, a must these days. But look at there, yeah, in the best shape <laughs> of your life, yeah, oh. your body's feeling good, hey, you've got no real niggles, don't yeah. really remember you getting injured too often, yeah, yeah I'm, you look after yourself well. I'm pretty lucky, I think, yeah, off the back of the, the work you do helps, but I have been pretty lucky, I've only had, well, I had a serious injury in 2013 with my pec, but other than that, the odd calf here and there and mm. just a constant sore neck. <laughs> <laughs> That's just scrummy, yeah. Yeah. The dark hearts. Yeah, how hard is that in the scrum, like, as a hooker, that front row pressure, like? Um, oh, it's it's the third hardest because you've got your loose head and your tight head, but it's still being in the middle there with your both arms around. Mm. Yeah, and you're, you're pretty vulnerable, but um, I'd say it's, it, it has gotten... Harder and harder. It seems to be everyone's getting stronger and True. everyone's doing neck work these days and yeah. stuff. So, yeah, I'm hanging on there. And you what feel that, where do you feel that pressure the most in like a scrum? Like, oh. where are you feeling it when you're like, Jesus, we're on here? 
Oh, it's all like around your shoulders and stuff. Like if you don't have your shoulders on and someone's coming at you, your your neck is all crammed up. Oh, you're, yeah, you're no good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It's it's not nice. <laughs> Sounds horrible. <laughs> yeah, you come out of the sunroof every now and again. Yeah. Okay, two more. Why are your warm ups twice as intense as the rest of the team? <laughs> Is that from Mark? That might be Mark Stafford. It is from Stafford. <laughs> it is. He's noticed. Oh, good on you, Mark. Um, oh, I don't know. I just I feel like if I get a good blow on, I um get the old sickle wind early. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That's actually not that hard. He always gives me shit about it. I've never yeah. noticed it. Like, do yeah. you go? No, I, extra I just hard do like I do a, quite a few lengths, and then I do that some of that breath hold stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's not too hard. I think he's just given me shit about it ever <laughs> since I sort of first come about. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Good man, Mark. Yeah. Nah, champion. Okay, last one. Best piece of advice you have for a Waterland listener? <sighs> I, know, I know you've got good advice. No, I'd, for me, I'm probably just um, don't be afraid to be different. I think, uh, you know, giving everything a crack uh, is something that I've always tried to do. Um, and not everyone's going to agree with it, but mm. if it feels right, then it works for you, I think, yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, <laughs> how, how good is, is that? that? Yeah. <laughs> Short, sharp, is that, is precise, that and on the absolute <laughs> money. Oh, there's the Instagram clip for sure, mate. You are on absolute fire, and what a what a pleasure it's been to um, have you on the podcast. Awesome to catch up. You're you're a true legend of New Zealand rugby, Crusaders rugby, Canterbury rugby, Horrifinoa rugby. Horrifinoa. Mate, it's been awesome to have you on and go through your journey and even share an eclipse with your water drink. Yeah. Um, 15% off Waterlad discount. <laughs> 15% Waterlad. <laughs> but Get appreciate you um, giving up your time and coming on the podcast, mate. No, all good, bro. All good. Mate, Thank you for a, having me. You're a legend. Waterlad.